everything you've done for Clifton Ford. Father, we just, uh, while we're in this, we'd like to pray for all of our leaders in Clifton Ford. From uh, all our mayor, our council, our, our uh, everybody who helps lead here. We'd like to pray for Darlene Birchard, Father, that, that the blessings that she poured out on this town, Father. Father, I thank you for the pastors that they, they minister a community, not a church, they minister a community. They look past all the denominations and, and just learn, they just love people. And Father, I thank you, Father, for, uh, we pray for our president, we also pray for our governor. Father, that, that if we believe that God's in charge, it's going to be for a purpose and for his purpose. And our purpose is not to, to talk bad about them, but to pray for them and lift them up, that he would use them to further this kingdom, Father. And Father, we pray over this uh, COVID-19 that we have, that this is a trying time for this town, to put forward a trying time for this nation. Father, I just thank you, Father, that while we're in this, that we learn, that we learn whatever you want us to learn, because we know that we weren't promised a bed of roses. We said there would be trials and tribulations. This is a trial. And when we come out on the other side, we'll be strong, more powerful Christians than we ever have been. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we'd like to introduce Michelle Wright. She's going to do a praise song for us. I heard her practicing, and the first time I heard her sing, she was really, really good. Y'all are going to enjoy this.
about this passage and I'm always telling people please 
when you read scripture, find yourself in the story. But today I'm going to actually ask you to find yourself as a disciple. Because as we read this story, once again, what happens to Jesus on this Thursday of Holy Week, Jesus has much to tell his disciples, much to teach them. And whether you know it or not, if you are a believer of Christ, you are a disciple. You are a disciple of Christ, and therefore we need to go out and to tell others about who Jesus is. We need to relay the message for which we hear in his word. His word is important to us because it teaches us. Jesus is teaching his disciples. These disciples who had been on the lonely road for three years with Jesus. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine walking with Jesus for three years and being taught by him? Oh my goodness. Shorty, you talk about a lesson that you would learn. Think of sitting at Jesus' table, at Jesus' feet, on the lonely, dusty roads, and learning from the Master. It's Thursday of Holy Week, and Jesus has yet more lessons for his disciples and for us. First of all, we know that he goes to the upper room with his disciples because they are going there to share Passover meal together. They're going to share this meal and they're going to work together and having this wonderful meal and to pray with one another and break bread together and be together and fellowship together just as we do in our homes now when we're not able to fellowship with one another. The other day on when I was preaching for last Sunday, I had my wife come around and give me a hug because those are the only hugs I get right now. We need more of those. We, I miss the hugs that we receive when we fellowship together. I miss the hugs that I would get after today. I'm also going to miss the lunch we would normally have after the day and have a wonderful soup and a sandwich. But Amen. I survive. But this passage not just the garden scene, but I want to talk just a little bit. I want to step back just a little bit and talk about what Jesus does and the lesson he teaches his disciples and teaches us when he kneels at their feet because someone had forgotten to bring a slave to the house. That's right. I said slave to the house in order for that, for that slave to wash their feet. Because that was the custom. When you went to someone's home, there would be a slave there to wash their feet. But instead, Jesus takes out, off his outer garment. He takes a bowl, a towel, and he goes to his disciples, and he begins to wash their feet. Now, if you're a disciple, I think many of us would be like Peter. You're not washing my feet. But Jesus told Peter, just as he tells us, if I do not wash your feet, you have no problem. Of course, headstrong Peter goes, well, then wash all of me. I think some of us might be just like that. If that's the case, then wash all of me. But no, Jesus reminds him that only your feet need to be washed. And Jesus washes his disciples' feet, a humbling experience for anyone. But he does it. And his disciples learn that it is far better to serve than to be served. Jesus teaches them the importance of being a servant and having a servant's heart in ministry and for others. As they sat around the table, he begins to tell them all kinds of things. And I can just imagine myself as the disciple, as Jesus begins to remind them that, A, he is not going to be with them always. In fact, he is going to be given into the hands of the authorities and that he would die. This is not the story we want to hear from Jesus. This is, a, as a disciple, this is not the story we want to hear because we want Jesus around. We have more to learn. We want him to teach us more and more and more. But the master came to do what he had to do. And 
And he tells them of betrayal. How one of them sitting at the table would betray him. And of all things, he would betray him with a kiss. That's not what a kiss is for, is it? Then he tells Peter, head strong Peter, that he would be that he would deny him three times. Can you imagine the look on Peter's face? Can you imagine the look on your face if Jesus told you that? The disciples sat around and they were wondering about the betrayer. They were wondering, is it I? Of course, if we read the story, we know that it was Judas and he was at the table. And then Jesus prays for the food that they were about to eat. And he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. And he poured out the cup. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. For the forgiveness of sins. And they passed out the elements. And they ate and they drank together. And Jesus reminded them to eat of this in remembrance And then they went to the garden. The story for which we read and heard. This wonderful story of Jesus going to the garden. And he goes off to pray. As was common for Jesus. He would go off to pray by himself. This time he took three of the disciples to be nearby. Although they weren't right there where he was at. But they could hear him. And he was in such anguish. What I love about the garden scene is that we see the full humanity of Jesus. I say the full humanity of Jesus because even Jesus didn't want to die. How do we know he didn't want to die? Because he asked the Father to let this cup pass from him. He wanted to stay and teach his disciples more. He wanted to live in his humanness. He wanted just as we do. He wanted to live. We think about this virus that is going around and we think, oh my gosh, I've got to stay home. I've got to be in quarantine. Oh, how awful it is. Well, just for a moment, think of what Jesus went through this week. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be shut in my house for a year than to go with what Jesus went through in this one week. Jesus goes to the garden and he prays and he asks the cup to pass from him. But we need to listen to the caveat that Jesus gives in that prayer. Because Jesus simply says, let this cup pass from me if it be possible, but let your will be done. Not mine. Let your will be done. How often do we need to pray that prayer ourselves? How often do we need to realize that we are not in control, that our sense of control is but a dream? Because there's only one person who is in control. He is in control of this virus. He is in control of this world. He is in control. And though we may be going through a storm right now, we may be in the middle of the storm, but even Jesus in the middle of the storm looked out and said, Stop! And the storm was quiet. But it is in the middle of our struggle with this virus, with ourselves, with whatever storm it might be that we are going through, it is in the middle of the struggle that God begins to work in us and transform us into the people that he wants us to be. 
Yes, there is a reason we go through the struggles of life because God uses it as a fire to refine us and to transform us into the Christians we need and should be. So ask yourselves as disciples, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to transform in me and allow God to let your control go away? And let go. And let go. You're in the garden. And Jesus is in anguish. He is in so much pain. And another part of our of the Gospels that said that he literally bled from his pores. He is in anguish over the fact that he knows exactly what is to come next. And he knows that his betrayer is at hand. Jesus been so easy to run. So easy to say no. But Jesus didn't allow the fear of dying to grip him. He allowed the fear to make him go forward because he loved you and me. Jesus goes on from the garden with his disciples, knowing that here they come, the Sanhedrin guard and all of their minions were there. And they had come to arrest him. They had come to take him away. The garden scene is beautiful in some ways, but let us never forget why Jesus does what he does. Jesus goes from the garden and to allow himself to be arrested for one reason, to bring us victory. Jesus may have prayed alone, but he was not alone. Just as when we pray, we are not alone. God is with us. Today, tomorrow, next week, next year, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is the body. Father God, my heart is beating fast as I think about the garden. I think about you praying to the Father to let the cup pass from you, but let his will be done. That you would go into the hands of the authorities willingly, not for yourself, but for us. You gave up your life for us so that we can have victory and we can do nothing but thank you thank you thank you and give you all the praise and glory that you so richly deserve may we learn as christians today that we are disciples and we need to go out and preach the message of the gospel of jesus christ to everyone we meet and we need to give you praise and glory and shout our hallelujahs Because it is in your name 